but he's not the one who actually started. There's people in the Old Testament. The message of repentance is not only in the New Testament, but it's in the Old Testament. Uh, let's everybody, let's get our Bibles, okay? Let's grab our Bibles. Today, you really need to have a Bible because we're going to read a lot of verses. We're going to go Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 6, 6, 36 through 39. First Kings 8, 46 through 50. Okay, it, it's the same, so you just pick one. Second Chronicles. Uh, by the way, this is not the main scripture for today. Uh, I'll read Second Chronicles 6, okay? 36 through 39. When they sinned against you, for there is no one who does not sin. And if they have a charge, change of heart in the land where they are held captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captivity, and says, we have sinned, we have done wrong, and acted wickedly. And if they turn back to you with all of their heart and soul, then from heaven, your dwelling place, hear their prayer and their pleas and uphold their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Ezekiel 18, 30 and 31. It says this, Therefore, you Israelites, I will judge each of you according to your own ways, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent. Turn away from your offenses. Then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourself of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, people of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent and live. Amen. So when we read these verses, even in the Old Testament, what are the principles? The first principle mentioned is, for there is no one who does not sin. This is the principle that we shared on the first week. Everyone sins. Everyone, I mean, everyone needs to repent. Second, if they have a change of heart and say, we have sinned, we have done wrong and acted wickedly. wickedly. This is the principle that we shared on the second and the third week. We must be sorry for our sins, and we must what? Say, I'm sorry. We must confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. Third, if they turn back to you with all their heart and soul, turn away from all their offenses, rid themselves of all the offenses they have committed, and get a new heart, new spirit. Yes. This is the definition of what repentance is. Now we're at the heart of the message of repentance. This is the third, third principle, the most important principle of repentance, which is we must come back to God. We must come back to God. Repentance means change of heart, change of mind which leads to change of who I live for, who I truly love, who I walk with, and who I obey. Are you going to be living away from God, or are you going to come back to God and live with God? Repentance means to stop going down the wrong path, turning around, and heading back to God, coming back to God. And this message of repentance continues in the New Testament. Acts 3.19 says this, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repentance is coming back to God. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't really matter how you feel. If you're not coming back to God, it can be a lot of things. But it's not repentance. You know, all of us exist for what? 
how long do you think we exist for? We are here to stay. We are here for all eternity. We never disappear. We are never annihilated. Our existence will continue. Can you get this forever? I mean, we live in this limited life and we can't picture that. But our existence here is for all eternity. Yes, your existence starts physically when you're born as a baby. And as a baby, the first step you take is the first step into the journey of life. From that moment on, from that to what, Bora's age, to Rebecca's age, to Jiu's age, to Jiu Hongjin's age, and my age, you're walking this thing called life. You're on this path of life. Every moment of your life is every step of your eternity. In this journey, the most important question for everyone is, no, the only important question is, where am I going? What is your destination? Well, I'm glad Jiu's here because he's, uh, he's graduated from high school. He's an adult now. <laughs> and he's walking in this life. Where is he going? You know, every day you live, every day you take steps. Where are those steps leading you? If you continue on your path right now, where are you going to end up? What God tells us in the Bible is that there's only one true destination. There is only one true way to life. One true way to life. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Now imagine yourself, you're on this island. And this island is surrounded by cliffs. It's not a beach island. It's one of those like in England or Ireland or Scotland, you know, you see. It's a high cliff. And on the bottom is just volcanic lava everywhere. And there's only one way off this island to the mainland of heaven. Now, everyone will be getting off this island when they die. The question is, are you going to be falling off a cliff or are you going to be crossing this bridge to the mainland to heaven? Now, this bridge, the only way to get off this island is made from the cross that Jesus Christ was crucified on. And you could only access this bridge if you are walking with Christ. If you're not walking with Christ, you are not on this road to this bridge. Now, when you first accept God, when you first accept God as your Lord and Savior, when you are first realize how sorry you are because You've never actually given credit to God for, for being the Almighty God or your loving Father who died for you. When you first realize that and you accept God as your Lord, your Master, and your Savior, person who saved me, and you take a vow, oh God, I'm going to walk with you forever. And you come in into His presence and you come back to God, you get on this path. That's called repentance. Everybody that says that we're Christian, everybody in here, we have to have repented. Because repentance means coming back to the right path. If you have never came back to the right path, you have never repented. For all of you who already accepted Christ, I'm talking to most of you out there, right? You say, okay, Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. He's my God. And you start your relationship with God. You pray, you read the Bible, you try to live as He wants. You communicate, you love Him. And then you find yourself drifting away. You take a detour and you, 
you take a detour from your walk with Christ, and now you're walking away towards the cliff. When you realize that you're walking away, that you're not really caring about God, loving God the way you should, and you say, I'm sorry, and ask for forgiveness, and you come back to, to God, that's repentance. Okay? With that in mind, we're going to read today's scripture. Okay, this is a scripture for today. Everybody, let's turn to the book of Luke, chapter 15. It's pretty long. So, everybody, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. It's the famous parable of the prodigal son. Some of you will probably know this story by heart. Luke chapter 15, 11 through 24. Here we go. He also said, now he's telling the proverb. A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. So he distributed the assets to him. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. After he had spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to, fit, to feed pig, pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food? And here I am, dying of hunger. I'll get up. I'll go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers. So he got up and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him on and was filled with compassion. He ran, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put on a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fattened calf and slaughter it and let's celebrate with the feast because the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. So they began to celebrate. Amen. Now, I'm sure all of you know this story, right? There's no one in here who probably don't know this prodigal son. This is the go-to story for repentance. Because the son comes back to the father. He demonstrated that he's repenting by coming back to the father. It's like us going back to our heavenly father. The son leaving the father to explore the world on his own may represent some of you. You want to discover and experience all this world has to offer away from God's rules and away from God's presence, away from the guilt of not living according to his word. If you walk away from God, as this prodigal son walked away from his father, the only thing that will be waiting for you in this world is the same bankrupt life that, uh, that awaited this prodigal son. Life without true joy. Life without true love, life without true satisfaction, life full of true loneliness and misery. That's what is awaiting for everyone who's walking towards the cliff. Then in verse 17, it says this, Particle son came to his senses. He said, aha, I see it now. You know, when he realizes the error of his ways, when he realizes that he's not living a proper life, that he's off course, 
when he realizes how good it was when he was actually with the father. When he realizes, hey, what am I doing here with these pigs? He realized that he needed to go back to the father. Especially you guys in high school and maybe in college too. If you find yourself desiring the things of this world, if you want to experience the excitement and the pleasure of the world, and you want to step away from God, so you could try this new world, new experience, new sin, The only thing that will await for you is misery. It just depends on how much misery it will take for you to have that aha moment when you come to your senses. Some people are broken before they realize this. I mean, broken, broken. Some people don't realize it until they're 40, 50 years old. When you catch yourself and I'm talking to all of you who's desiring the things of the world, who wants to step away from this burden of God and say, hey, I want to do what I want to do. You need to come to your senses. You need to catch yourself. You need to realize that if you value things above God, when you value yourself more than God, when you want to do the things of this world that God is saying, hey, those are not good things. Those are bad yeah. things. Stay away from that. Unless you come to your senses, there's only going to be misery, heartache. You have to come to yourself. Come to your senses. Realize that you are caught in this temptation from Satan. Just as the prodigal son did. Now, when the prodigal son, when he came to his senses, what did he do? Well, verse 20 says this. He got up and he went to the father. When he realized that he needed to go back to the father, he did what he realized he must. He didn't just contemplate it and sit down. As we talked about last week, he wasn't like Judas. He didn't say to himself, how can I go back? I'm such a bad son. I should be a man about this. I should take responsibility for my actions and just live a miserable life. I'm just going to be a homeless person living in this pigsty until I die. Because what? I deserve it. He wasn't like Judas. That's not what he did. When he realized, when he came to his senses, he got up. I must go to my father. There's happiness there. There's warmth there. There's love there. There's food there. And he went to his father. When you realize the error of your ways, when you realize, you know what? I'm sinning against God. It is not enough just to be sorry. It is not enough just to say I'm sorry. You have to get up from where you are and go to the Father. You have to repent. You know, if the son was just full of remorse and he just felt sorry for himself, but he didn't go to God. He didn't go, to back, go back to his father. He just sat in that pigsty and just said, woes to me. What a bad life I have. What mistakes I made but just sat there day after day, things would just get worse. He would just be a miserable, sorry, remorseful, remorseful person. Remember, being sorry is not repentance. Repentance requires you to come back to God. Re repentance requires you to have a new heart, a new spirit like we read today. A heart that says, you know, I'm going to value God. New spirit that praises God, thanks God, honors God, glorifies God. 
as we close today, I want to ask you, do you find that you are not happy with the love of your parents or God alone? All of you know that God loves you. All of you know that your parents love you, right? Are you not happy with that alone? Do you seek to find happiness from somewhere else? Do you find yourself desiring more, seeking other things to fulfill you more than God and your parents? Do you desire to discover, experience, enjoy the things of this world, the things that are advertised? Do you want to do what you want rather than listening to God and your parents? Do you find yourself drifting away from God because you don't really think about or care about God? Well, you have to repent. You have to come back to God. If you know you are on the wrong path, you need to stop, turn around, and come back to God. If you know that you should come back to God, you're living your life day after day. You're walking, and you realize, hey, I'm walking towards a cliff there. That's where God is. I, that's where I need to be. That's where I must go back. You realize that you come to your senses but you don't. You just keep on walking that way while you're looking at the road that you should be on. Every day, you're looking and saying, I should be going back, but further and further, you're just walking away from God. That's not repentance. Unless you come back, you cannot go back without going back. You need to stop when you know you're going wrong. Turn around. Face God and say, God, forgive me. And you have to walk. You have to return to God. I want all of us to uh, bow our heads right now and close our eyes, okay? Wherever you are, bow your heads, close your eyes. I want you to try to have a come to your senses moment right now. Think about your life. What's important to you? What is on your mind right now at this moment? What are you valuing? What are you desiring? What are you seeking? What are the things that make you happy? What are the things that you're loving right now? Is it God? Or is it things of the world? Is it things of sin? Is it things of your pride? What is it? I want you to think about that. Are you walking away from the fellowship of God or are you walking with God? If you're not with God, you're away from God and you need to stop wherever you are. You need to face God and you have to walk towards God. You have to say, Lord, I want to love you with all of my heart. These things I want to do, Lord. If you tell me these are not good things, I want to stop. Help me. If you're telling me these are sinful things, I want to stop. Because this is destroying my relationship with you. I'm walking towards hell. I want to stop before I reach that cliff. I want to turn around so I can walk with you, Lord. I need all of you to come to your senses right now. What are you valuing? I want you to be sorry for those. I want you to, to say you're sorry. You have to ask for God's forgiveness. And you have to repent by coming back to God. And God will be like that father who sees you far, far off. As soon as you stop and you turn around and say, God, I'm coming back. When you take that first step, he'll be right there with open arms embracing you. It does not matter how big of a sin or how long you've sinned. The sacrifice that Jesus gave for you, his blood is 
is more valuable than any of those sins. It will, it's valuable enough to cover everything that you've done wrong. The moment you turn around and you face God and say, God, I'm in coming back to you, he'll be right there to embrace you. I pray that this week we would think about our walk with God and say, Lord, I'm coming back to you this week. Let's all have that heart. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just touch our hearts, Lord. That you would bring us to our, our senses, Lord. That we are here for all eternity, and this world is just enticing us. Our sin nature, we want to do what we want to do. I want to get angry when my parents tell me not to do what I want to do. I'm angry that God say this is sin when I want to do this thing. I pray that we will come to our senses and realize that, that that's the wrong, the wrong road, Lord, that we're walking away from you, Lord, that we need to walk with you, that you are the only true way of life. Because you love us so much, we want to love you back. Because you're the only one who really, really knows how to fulfill us, we want to be with you, Lord. We want to live the purpose for the life that we have, this eternal existence, Lord. 